to my liking talk. I'm Patrick Nunes and I'm going to talk about how our team uses Kiza in Terraform to get the bad parts and the savings. I'm going to go through a couple of points. First of all, what is Kiza, how we use it in Terraform, and some of the issues we come across, how our team uses Kiza to, to save failing pods and some cost savings at the end. So, what is Kiza? It's a uh, Kubernetes and driven auto scaling. It's a solution that manages your workloads. Um, and it basically provides metrics to your horizontal pod auto scaler by registering itself as a metric adapter. Uh, so it can scale your workloads. Uh, how it does that is by creating a horizontal pod auto scaler, which then manages your workload from well, between one and n um, replica counts and between zero and one, so with this feature of scaling to zero, uh, Kita deletes your HPA and then manages your workloads between these zero and one replica counts. Now there are there are several scalers that are available uh, to provide metrics to Kita and the HPA. Uh, you could use long like you could use Kafka metrics. You could use AWS CloudWatch metrics and something that we use is Prometheus. Um, yeah, and how we use uh, Kita in Terraform, um, you have your usual YAML that you would define to create a scaled object to scale your particular deployment with Kita. Uh, and basically you need to take that and translate it into a Kubernetes manifest resource Terraform schema, basically. Uh, and you need to do this because there is no actual Terraform provider available yet. Um, so you need to do it with this Kubernetes manifest way. Um, some issues that we come across uh, is that there's this island replica account parameter that you can only set to zero. You cannot set it to anything greater than zero. You cannot set it to null. Um, and the problem with this, uh, or this, uh, obviously sets the replica account that should be taken into account when scaling when you don't have any requests coming in, you don't have anything uh, in your uh, pipelines. Uh, so your service is basically in the United States. Um, the problem with this is you can't really template it, template this parameter. Because like if you have a dev environment and a prod environment, in the dev environment, you might be testing out some stuff, uh, and afterwards, when there's no load anymore, you're not testing anymore, then your services could scale to zero. But in your production environment, you want to handle things differently, because like uptime might be quite crucial. So even if nothing's coming in, because there was some error or anything like that, um, requests might start coming in again anytime, and you want to have one or two pods around to make sure you have something to handle those requests, then yeah, really seven prod environments is quite different. You need to template differently. Um, but yeah, currently this is not uh, possible uh, and there is no one GitHub issue about this. Uh, so yeah, just something to keep in mind. Uh, another issue that we come across is that of four services, we reuse the connections of the requests. So we have multiple thousands of requests coming in every second. Uh, and if we would reuse, oh no, sorry. If we would create connection uh, for every single request that comes in, then our services would be much slower. There would be higher resource utilization, uh, greater response times. Um, so yeah, that's why we re reuse those connections to lower the resources needed, and lower the response time, make our services faster, and cheaper to run, uh, which is great and all, but if you use Kida, uh, it's not great, it's because like, if the load increases and Kida starts killing up one by one or a couple at a time, uh, the, the problem with these long lit connections, uh, as you can see in this dashboard, where you can see the pods uh, and the CPU usages, um, in this load, just example loads that we've run, you can see that um, Kida is adding more and more pods, but it's struggling to really 
distribute the load between the pods exactly because of these long lift connections because so you can see that the there's like a pod that has like a hundred and forty two percent CPU usage and there's another pod that has three and a half percent which is quite a huge difference and we can't really afford to have that so something we've done uh, is that on our server side, we implemented a connection resetting logic. Um, you could go about it, um, and yeah, basically you have two options to, to choose from. Uh, one is like resetting connections every couple of minutes, uh, or you could reset the connections uh, every couple of requests. And we went with this second option uh, since it seemed like a better solution. Um, which comes from the fact that if you have increased loads coming in, then you want to reset uh, the connection faster, much faster. Uh, and if you don't have much loads coming in, then it's perfectly fine to reset connections uh, less often, basically. Uh, so yeah, that's how we solve that problem. And how we're saving pods always save failing pods with Kida is by uh, doing the following. Uh, if we have a pod that's unavailable, then we add 2x the number of pods uh, that are unavailable. Um, we do it with the following um, Prometheus query. Um, that is the first part that does exactly that. Uh, adds the 2x the number of pods that are unavailable and the uh, second bigger part uh, that has three subsections basically tells you when uh, you can do that. Uh, first of all, when the number of available replicas is below the desired amount, that's quite uh, straightforward. Um, and then when the number of available replicas is not currently changing, because like uh, when you're scaling up and down, you don't want uh, Kita to react on an available pod right away and also we need the last part as well that when in the last x seconds the desired amount is not changed uh, this is crucial when you are starting up a bunch of pods uh, then you might have different kind of services like you have a lighter service you have a heavier service like a lighter service might uh, set up um, a pod in like less than a minute and like a beefier service that loads some kind of deep learning model uh, might take uh, 10 minutes even to set up uh, and you could parameterize that um, and yeah tell Kida not to scale based on the unavailable pods uh, in that case uh, so yeah basically this is what we do it's quite useful because like if whenever you have unavailable pods of failing because of some errors of like a huge document gaming or something like that, then um, even if your on call person uh, gets an alert, uh, it he or she still has some time because uh, like Kida is already acting on it and trying to save it. Um, so yeah, that's what we do. Uh, and the last part, uh, uh, cost savings. Well, first of all, uh, we're quite a big team in terms of resource usage. Uh, all our infrastructure runs on uh, the internal Kubernetes services managed by our internal uh, infrastructure teams. Um, we are actually the second biggest users of the resources uh, in the company. And yeah, we have currently we have 564 pods, 153 services, so quite a few. Uh, so basically just to give you an idea about like how just um, 10% change in the user resources uh, could result in huge amounts of cost savings. Um, but basically, uh, we have used Kida. We have uh, applied Kida for a subset of our services for like the past, past month now. And after deployment, uh, the number of pods for these subset of services uh, that we used it for, went down from 95 
to sat around 75, which is a huge 21% change. Um, so yeah, you can see how, how greatly beneficial Kida can be in terms of cost savings, uh, as well as like, yeah, just reacting to incidents and stuff. Yeah, so that would be it. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask.